Yo, what's going on guys, it's Actix here, finally bringing you the tutorial for the Surpix render. Uh, and basically today I'm going to be showing you how to create this. And I'm really sorry for the delay, I've just been extremely cut up at school. I have my last exams coming up shortly. And so I've been really caught up in school, lots of studying. But I'm going to be trying to make it up to you guys by showing you how to get up until this point. So, first things first, just go right into Cinema 4D. And you're going to want to create a new text. So, MoGraph, MoText. Uh, I'm just going to center this because of OCP. There we go. Put it in the middle. Let's change the text to say, wait, for example. It doesn't even matter. Then I'm going to turn up the depth a little bit, just so we get a bit of a 3D, a little bit more depth to the text, which is going to help us later once we add the paint, that way it looks more realistic and part of the actual letters. And uh, second step, you're just going to copy paste the mo text, and now you have a duplicate. And uh, after you've selected the duplicate, you go to caps, fill it, fill it. So the start and end are both fill it, and then you just change the radii down to one centimeter on both. And basically, what this does is it makes an outline of the text. And there you go. Now you can see that it just basically. Uh, yeah, just does one more layer around, but not in front, and it's just uh, so that you can apply a different texture to what's inside and outside. So, what we're going to be doing now is pushing this fillet a little bit more forward, just so that it leaves a little bit of space indented in your text. And that's just so that, this might be a little bit too much, Maybe like that. And that's just because when it renders, it'll leave a nice little sh shadow there and uh, it'll look really good later in Photoshop, especially once you apply a color correction. Um, so, by the way, if, if this commentary sounds shitty, it's because yesterday I had a party, so I'm hungover. And uh, yeah, I'm doing this sweet art because I owe it to you guys. So, yeah. And, um, okay, so. Now we're going to be creating the first materials. Just double click on the little sphere down here. You just got to, to create a new material. You either double click in this rectangle down here. Just go to create a material. Then you can right click, edit, or just double click this, and it'll open your settings for the material. So first things first, I like to right click on this little sphere right here and change it to object self shadow. This is just personal preference, there's no real change, it's just because I've always done it that way. You're gonna wanna uncheck specular, then go to luminance, just go to texture, click this little arrow right here. You'll have a drop down menu, select Fresnel, just like that. And then we're just gonna turn down the mix strength a little bit. There we go something like that, so about 50% and about 70%, and uh, that is it for the outside, and we're just going to apply that right there, then you're going to click on the material here, and you're going to open up the options right here, and it says projection, UVW mapping, you're just going to want to change that to cubic, and basically what that does is it, it uh, changes so that, oh, and also select seamless. And basically what that does is it makes it so that the texture is evenly spread out as opposed to being projected on one side only. So now it's, uh, it's going to be evenly spread out on the entire letter. So now to make the second material, I'm just going to go ahead and bring it in from the original that I made. This way I don't mess up anything and I can show you guys directly. So basically create a new material. Object soft shadow as usual. And then I believe, okay, so we've got luminance. And basically, luminance is the light that the material gives off from the inside or the outside. But uh, what we do is we're just going to apply a new Fresnel, same as before. So we'll go down to here, Fresnel, 
And then you're gonna wanna click on the box right here and it's gonna be, here, I'll just show you. The Fresnel, and then you click here and change the colors to whatever you want. So maybe you're gonna want a blue uh, texture. And as you can see, you can sort of mess with the, what's inside and what's on the outside of your material. So maybe a darker blue for the inside and a lighter one for the outside. Something like that. Maybe a little bit darker. Yeah, something like that. And then you're gonna, let's see, is there any glow here? There is. Okay, so we're gonna want to apply color to the glow here. Just gonna make sure you select that. And uh, uncheck, use, uncheck, use material color. And then you can change this glow to whatever you want. So if that was blue, then maybe something actually yeah, so that's bluish as well. And just turn down the brightness. Let's see what the settings are at right here. 60 for the inner strength. We've got 10 and 5. So outer strength 10, radius 5. And that's just going to give a slight glow to your material. And then you're going to go down to displacement, check that. And then I can't remember exactly which one. So I use noise and wavy turbulence. Okay. So for displacement, you're just going to check that, go to texture, noise. And what this does is it makes uh, waves or like discrepancies within the resolution of your material. And basically, you're just going to go to this right here just click on the preview of your displacement right here change the noise to wavy turbulence which is what i used and you're just going to want to change the global scale to something a little bit larger and basically it just zooms in this image and changes the size of the, of the waves so make that about 250 and as you can see that already changes that then uh, we're going to change the height, which is the intensity of the uh, of the displacement. And basically, it's five centimeters from the surface of your normal material, so it's going to spike up and down five centimeters. We're just going to change that to something like twelve, and then bring the strength down to approximately forty. Oh, no. Something like that. And uh, that's pretty much it for this material. If you have Cinema 4D uh, Studio, then you have Sub Polygon Displacement. I would recommend checking that if you have it available. If you don't, don't worry, there's barely any difference. It's just basically slightly improves the, the quality of the displacement. So now you're just gonna apply this material to there, to the inside. Go to the settings for your material by clicking on it right here, change the projection to cubic, seamless, and now you've got your setup basically done. Now that's enough for the text, and what I did after that was you can either, there's two ways to approach this, you can either apply a random effect here by selecting both your, your text layers, go to MoGraph, Effector, Random and uh, you're gonna see immediately that it's sort of shifted letters in all three uh, diamond-like planes. And you can just mess around with the settings of that under the effector. You can either change the strength of it, from zero obviously it's back to normal, or you can go into more, slightly more in depth and go into the parameter here and change these values to whatever you want. And basically this allows you to extensively edit uh, the positioning of each of your letters and so I also like to maybe something like that click on rotation and then just sort of mess around with these and what it does is it randomly uh, applies the rotation and the location to each of the letters so it's not going to be identical for each one which is different and I'm just going to bring the letters a little bit closer together because it seems like it's slightly spread out, something like that. That should be okay. Now that's enough for the text. Now we're gonna be adding some other like features and that's the cubes, which I use. So just click on this little button right here and basically this brings you to the four window view. You're gonna want the front view, which is sort of like a bird's eye view, 
of your text. And this is going to help you because you're going to be using freehand spline uh, creator or drawer, I guess. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to draw lines however you like. So I would recommend having some branching out from different letters, something like this. Then if you click back here, go back to your normal view, make sure that your mode is on polygon mode, which is up here. And now you're able to move them around. So what we can do now is turn them into 3D cubes by clicking on the spline, hold Alt on your keyboard, and then go to Sweep Nerves. And what that does is it automatically places the Sweep Nerves uh, as the father of the spline. And uh, now we're going to add in a circle spline right here. Bring down the radius to something like, I don't know, six. And then just to pull in the, the, the circle underneath the spline, or no, on top, I'm sorry. And so now, as you can see, the tube has turned into a 3D object, as opposed to just being a little line. And you can mess with the radius of your line here under the circle. So maybe something like that, three centimeters should be okay, that looks pretty decent. And then you can just move them around however you like. Uh, yeah, just adjust them however you like. And sort of a shortcut for this is just copy paste your sweep nerves, take out the spline, copy paste, paste, and then just drag and drop your splines in there. And then now you automatically got all your 3D tubes ready to go. So that's essentially it. Now for lighting, uh, I'm just going to be showing you two different ways of making a good light room for this. First one is I would recommend going into the front view once again. And then taking something like, let's see, a circle. This one. Bringing up the radius, make sure it's quite a bit larger than your, than your render, just so it has enough space. Align that. Go back to your normal view. Then you're just going to apply an extrude nerves to that. And that did not work. Okay. Okay. So, this is not how we do it. Um, okay, we're going to try that again. We're going to go to the front view. Then you can either use uh, freehand cubic or the B spline. I'm just gonna go with freehand because it's much easier and it doesn't even need to be exact. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a circle around your render just like that. Go back into your normal view and then holding alt on your keyboard, bring in an extrude nerves. This way the spline is now 3D and all you have to do is turn up the depth and now you've got your little studio so let's just bring that forward so that our render is centered. And so there we go. That's perfect. And now we're going to have to make a material to make it glow. So go to color, uncheck that. Go to luminance, check that. Go to texture right here. Radiant. You want to click on here. Here where it says type 2DU, you're going to change that to circular. And then you're, for the last step, you're just going to right click on the black little box right here and then click convert knots. Go to luminance again, just click back here and then change the brightness to something like 600%. Okay. And uh, take off speculum, just like that. So this is your material that will give off some light. We can test that right now by going into your render settings. Ambient occlusion, global illumination, and then we'll just let's see how that looks without the displacement material because it takes too long to render. Well, as you can see, you've already made a light room where you can uh, very easily make any render look quite decent. 
So obviously this is without the displacement material here, but as you can see, using a circle light room like this, make sure that all the sides of your render are uh, lit up enough. And that's very important, especially when you want to make a high quality render. So now we're just going to go ahead and apply our displacement material and uh, you're pretty much ready to go. So this is your render. Maybe some final render settings tips. Uh, make sure you use ambient occlusion, global illumination, which you can find under effect here. You just click them and select them. Then go to save. Make sure the format is PNG and it says alpha channel right here. Also your output is entirely up to you. I usually use 1024 by 768. And uh, oh yeah, one final thing. You're gonna realize that maybe when you render this, your Lightroom is gonna be visible. And this is not a good thing because you obviously don't want your render to have a big circle around it, which is gonna be a pain to edit later. So this is slightly complicated, but bear with me because once you learn this trick, you can uh, make your own Lightrooms and it's really an essential tip of a, a graphics designer. So just select your, your Lightroom, right click it, go to Cinema 4D Tags, and then Compositing right here. Then under Compositing, you have your settings in the bottom right corner. Just uncheck Receive Shadows and Scene by Camera. And basically what that does is that it's hidden completely, but it still casts light onto your uh, setup. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the Cinema 4D part. Now I'm gonna be moving into Photoshop and showing you guys how to effectively make your uh, paint look realistic in your render. So you're a also, you're gonna wanna make an overlay for the white outline of your text so that it's sort of grungy looking. So we're just gonna take off color right here, take off specular, go to alpha, select that, texture, low texture, uh, I don't know, it could be anything, any texture that you want really, click no, and then there you go, you can barely see it, but uh, that's gonna be an overlay, and basically you can place that on top of your other materials, and as you can see, make sure you put that on cubic as well. But this is going to leave a little uh, mark on top of your white material, which you already have there. So let's see how that looks. You can use this with any texture you like. This is actually a pretty good tip for uh, overlays. They're extremely helpful when making uh, grungy textures, especially when you want them to be applied on different colors and stuff. So as you can see, it's sort of applying a sort of a dirty look on top of it without having to create a whole other material. And uh, yeah. Right, so we're back into Photoshop. You really can use any render for this. I'm just gonna be showing you the tips for uh, effectively using paint and making it look realistic. So it's extremely easy to find these stocks. Literally just go on Google and put 3D paint splatters.png and uh, you'll find a huge variety of them. Extremely easy to do. You don't need me to provide those at all. You just have to look for them. So, as you can see in my pack, I've gotten a good amount of them and uh, they're all really high quality and uh, can look great in any situation or text. So, I'm just gonna be dragging in one of them. And the trick basically to applying paint and making it look like it's actually part of the render is you want to make it so that it's overlapping some parts of your text, but then, it's, then again, it's under others. So for example, let's see. Uh, also positioning it is extremely important, obviously. Um, hmm. Let's see, it's, it takes some time because you've really got to find the perfect uh, placement for these, but usually you can manage no problem. So this is pretty time consuming, but what you're gonna do is you use your polygonal lasso tool, which is right here. You might have lasso tool as your default, but just click and hold, and then you can go down to your polygonal lasso tool. And then basically what I do is I just cut out along the sides that I don't need anymore. But make sure that you don't just cut out anywhere and uh, try to make it as, as fluid as possible. So let's see, I'm just gonna go really quick here. 
something like that, then you can just cut off all this crap. Like that. Oh. Okay. And uh, so now you've got it on top, but this is a bit too extravagant and sort of takes over the uh, render. So just bring down your, your brightness, your, your opacity a little bit too. Right? And uh, move that around until you see that you have the chance to make it look like it's overflowing. So for example, right here, I think I've got a pretty good, good yeah, let's see. You can just go through like that. That and basically you guys get the idea. You're, gonna, you're just gonna wanna turn down the opacity, see where your your stocks are at. And then maybe right here, something like this. Cut off all that. Ladies are beautiful. And then just bring up your opacity every once in a while. Zoom out a bit, check and see how it looks, and then eventually you'll be able to find the, the perfect way to do this. And uh, I have some examples of that. Let's see. Uh, I made a good friend of mine a background. Wait, there it is. So as you can see, uh, I just applied the, the, the paint and then cut it off so that it looks like it's coming from the inside of, this, of the outside layers of the cube or this logo and uh, make sure it overlaps on some stuff. Add some shadows by just using a brush overlay. And uh, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. So really sorry for the shitty commentary. I'm extremely tired, extremely hung over, but I wanted to get this video out to you guys. So yeah, peace out, yo, and stay sexy.